In this video, we'll be looking at how to take a vector image that you've uh, run into Inkscape and on the final cutter actually use Roland Cut Studio to cut uh, using that particular piece of software. Let's dive in. And open up Inkscape. And I'm going to presume that you've already brought your vector file into this computer. Uh, this is the final cutter computer in our, in our makerspace. You're going to need a flash drive to do that or uh, cloud storage and then download it through a browser. But once the actual physical file is on the computer, I'm going to open up Inkscape and go to File, Open. And I'll be using a file on our desktop called cool.svg. And here we go. And now if you're wondering, uh, is this really a vector? If I go to node editing, you'll see the actual node, so we know for sure this is a vector. Uh, if you're wondering where this image came from, this is actually vectorized from a, a raster image that uh, uh, the procedure for that was in a previous video. So if you're not sure how to take an Im existing image that you find on the internet and turn it into a vector, uh, be sure to watch that previous video. But now that it is a vector, I'm going to go to Extensions and then Roland Cut Studio. Now this extension is only installed on the computer that's by the vinyl cutter, so it won't be available on your own computer uh, unless you build it manually. And if I hit Open in Cut Studio, it should go through a sequence and directly import those vectors into Roland, as we see here. So at this point, you want to make sure the size and scale is, uh, is accurate. So if I select the object, you can see I can uh, adjust the, the dimensions. Um, if I don't select Keep Aspect, I can uh, end up in some funny situations. For example, if I make this um, 10 inches wide, it doesn't maintain the aspect ratio, and as such, you get this distortion, which may not be desirable. Uh, and if that's the case, of course, make sure just click hit undo, and uh, you hit keep aspect. So if I do make this 8 inches wider, or 8 inches wider, what have you, it will automatically maintain proportion uh, to adjust the height accordingly. So now you see the height has also grown, and I end up with a larger image. The uh, corner here, the bottom left corner, corresponds to the bottom left corner of the actual vinyl cutter. Um, so I'm going to move my, uh, my item into that corner as much as possible. Uh, if I'm ready to cut, I would probably need to load up some vinyl, and that's a, a physical procedure that uh, is not on the computer. It's actually preparing the machine and going through a little bit of a sequence there. But let's presume for a moment that, that sequence has been done, and I'll show you how to do that, um, perhaps in class. But if that a procedure has been done, then there are certain measurements that we can get from the vinyl cutter itself. If I go to cutting, hit change, hit change again, and then get from machine. Pause the video here. Okay, so I went ahead and loaded some vinyl using the procedure that I mentioned. Uh, you'll have to learn uh, from somebody how to actually do that. But once the vinyl is loaded, um, let me go through the sequence again. To actually make sure that the cutting plane corresponds to the particular piece or roll of vinyl that's in the machine, I'm going to go to cutting, uh, change, change again, and then get from machine. And these numbers will update based on the actual piece of material that is being fed through the vinyl cutter. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit OK. And if I am ready to cut, if the correct color is there and my piece is uh, on the plane entirely, it's not hanging off the edge or anything, and the size is right, I'm going to hit OK. And if I do so, it'll actually start cutting. But uh, this is just a tutorial video, so I'm not going to do that. But hopefully this gives you a sequence as to how to take your vector image, uh, opening it up, and then going to this uh, extension and directly importing those vectors into Cut Studio.